Hello and welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp and the second part of this mini-series, which is called Simplify, Organize and Automate. This is the second part when we talk about file organization with Plink itself. The idea of the video was coming from a subscriber of the channel, George Vanyala. Thank you very much, George, for this uh, insightful comment. And in this comment, he was asking that basically there are a lot of files that are created by Plink. And isn't there a way to organize things a little bit better so you don't have so, much, so many files in the working directory? Based on a comment of George, I was looking in the possibilities of file organization a little bit more detail. And indeed, it turned out that there is a very simple way to organize your input and output files in a efficient way with Plink. So you can find your results quicker. And in general, you don't have a so much or so many files in the working directory, which is, I think, at the end, better for everybody. So just proceed, proceed and see how it is done. So in this part, we will try to organize our files a little bit better. And let's say for the sake of the example that we need to extract chromosome three, but we don't want to put that into the directory with all the other files. But let's say that we want to put it in its own directory, which is, let's say, called output. Normally, we would need to run Plink and grab these files manually and put them into the desired directory. But actually, you can do this also in one step already in the Plink run. All you need to do is to specify the output directory, which is, let's say, called results. Or, and you need to put in the slash, the slash appropriate for your operating system. In, I am in Windows, so this would be this uh, right-leaning slash. And you run this, and you get an error because this file or this folder is not created. That's because we are in this test directory, but in this, te this test directory, there is no subfolder called results. Now, what you could do is you could create this manually by you know, clicking new folder or however you create the new folders and do it manually. But you can also do it in a simple way. Back in R, actually, there is a command for this, which is called dear create. So this is actually just creates a directory in your current working directory. So if you run this and then you run the blink right after that, you see that now there is no error. And back on your hard disk, now there is a results directory and there is also the results files in there. So you see that there is neatly, everything is neatly organized. What you could also do is actually load the data or kind of take the data from a different directory than your work directory. I simulate this now with moving the data files into a data directory. So you see here that is this directory data and the data is here back in R and together with Plink, we, what we need to do is specify the very same thing. So the input could come from a different directory, which is called data. And let's say we uh, extract chromosome four now, just to see that there is a difference and we run this. And it's actually working very well. It's take the data is taken from the data directory and put into the results directory chromosome for chromosome four. So we are back on the hard disk and the results directory now contains also the output files for chromosome four. So just the one more note to the very end of the video. So if you want to do more than one subdirectory, so more than one level, then you need to specify in this dear create command in R the recursive option to true. So all these will be created in one step. But anyway, the main takeaway point from this video that you can load the data from any directory and also output the results to any directory as you wish using just one line of the Plink command. Thank you very much for watching the, the second part of this mini series. If you find this information useful, 
perhaps you could consider sharing it with your friends and colleagues so they can learn about this as well. There is one more part to go where we will talk about connection of R and Plink and also about ways how to automate several processes and how to generate a lot of Plink runs with a very simple script. For this video, I thank you for your time and have a nice day.